what's going on everybody jason here welcome to another episode of the division z podcast today we're going to be talking about firebase c everybody go ahead and introduce yourselves hey everyone <laughs> you know me i'm the side host kate cosby everyone knows me but let's talk about our guest today let's talk about our guest hell yeah let's talk about our guest introduce yourself my man we all know who he is <laughs> right i'm the other kyle <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> we got Kyle and Kyle today on the Division Z podcast. Um, Hell yeah! I had a little bit of a different intro there. I wanted to try something new, just see, it, just see if it was a more casual intro. I don't know. I tried to I tried a different intro there, but anyways, we all, hmm. we got Kai, Jack Lobster, my boy, and Thunderquake in, in the chat. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome to the stream, everybody. Um, first things first, before we get today's stream started, you know, we have to do this. Everybody go ahead in the chat on Twitch, <laughs> check out exclamation mark merch to check out the Division Z podcast official merchandise. And, uh, we got t-shirts in three different colors right now. We got black, white, and gray. So it's over there on the Streamlabs merch store on my Twitch chat. You can hit exclamation mark merch, or it'll be linked in K cosmics description. So oh, yeah, that'll be that. All right, folks. <laughs> so. Having the big news. Firebase C. Firebase C. <laughs> we love Firebase C gaming, don't we? Um, what does everyone think? I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but just go. Anyone start because there's a lot to talk about here. Let's go. What are we talking about? <laughs> I love this map. Well, um, I mean, I guess I'll kick things off. Um, all right. Okay. So, first of all, I went into the map not so much scared, but definitely like I had my concerns, right? I had my concerns. Uh, I thought, I thought, um, I didn't think the Wonder Weapon would be good. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, I thought that, I thought that it would just feel underwhelming. And I thought the map would be small again, which is was not right. The map is massive. The map mm. is like, ma it's might be, I think that might be the biggest map we've had since like maybe Blood. It's huge, yeah. It it definitely gives mm -hmm. me that Blood of the Dead kind of feeling where there's a lot of ground to cover. I, yeah, I agree with that. Because, because originally, and I don't know if you guys felt like this as well, you know then the assault waves that happen where the yeah, zombies will right. all come in and start attacking certain Love parts those. of the map. I thought you could only go past a certain point of that assault wave and the zombies would come over, right? Yeah, same. I yeah. thought... I. I, and then I and then I jumped over it and I was like, oh, you can go past a certain point down to the the actual bottom of it. Yeah, that's cool. That's a good and, touch. Yeah, and I seen someone as well. You know when you go outside the map, mm -hmm. I seen someone put this video. Someone glitched away outside the map. The whole other parts of the map are almost like like accessible. Like it's not like you're gonna fall through the map. The map like works mm. like a like a normal. Nor you know how some maps it gets really glitchy outside. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This map kind of looks like. It was intentionally put like that. You know, maybe like, I, I, the thing that I'm thinking, maybe they wanted to make that area a little bit bigger, potentially. Mm -hmm. And then they just were like, uh, maybe that's a little too big. Let, let's cut it down a little bit. Let's yeah. bring the bushes yeah. back up here, you know. Yeah. Um, my yeah. chat is spamming I mean, squids and worms. What is going squid, on, guys? Bro, what's right. going on? What is going on <laughs> in the chat today? <laughs> but I mean, I mean, um, overall, uh. As far as actual map gameplay goes, I think it's the best map we've had since. I'm I'm willing to say Derizen Draka. I think Fire BC is the best map we've had since like Derizen Draka. True. I mean, hmm. like it. It's definitely got a lot of potential there. I haven't done the Easter egg yet, but it's one of no. those things where you go, Maybe. it it could be. You know, like it it, yeah. it could be really good. It could be. I don't know though, because we have this one Easter egg step that's a little bit funky which we'll talk about later yeah and it drove yeah. me and cosmic wild on stream yesterday i mean um, Ma magna you haven't done right. the straight yet have you no 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 not at all no. not at all so what what are your perspectives on the map through just gameplay and stuff um see i was really um excited for it just because of the trailer it looked like it'd be a good map um then one of my uh good friends uh zombie who on twitter was like this is the best map since revelations i'm like dude i love revelations <laughs> and he likes Revelations a lot too. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, I gotta check this out. Um, so I started playing it and I really like the the opening area because it's like he said, it's a lot like they could make that map just a survival map, or you could just yeah. stand there and point hoard, you know. And that's what I would do. I would point hoard in that area, then I'd jump into the actual area of the of the fire base and I would open everything up, you know, yeah. get the generators on, get my perks, 
everything is very seamless and even the um the attacks like the ambushes it's mm -hmm. it seems like it would have been so overwhelming in any other game but this one you it's this one if you have everything you, ready you're good yeah exactly that's the thing very, right it's right you have so many more tools in this game that mm -hmm. you can use that you it, it's so yeah it's seamless it works it right it's great you have artillery mm -hmm. you got napalm it's awesome it's and fun. Uh, it's definitely one of yeah. those same feelings where yeah you could stay in the in the in the village in the starting area and hoard yeah. up points like you can in D Machine. Right. And I think that's a yeah. very interesting way to play the game. I think it's different compared to other zombies games cuz other zombies games like all right let's try to open all the doors as soon as possible and like Right. I, I think you could it, it, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it how you it, it feels like you can do that in Cold War but it feels like you just can't do that in any of the other games. Hmm. It's funny enough that you say uh, the first part of the, you know, the village, it feels like a survival map because yeah. essentially, if you took the rest of the map away and just had power on in the village from the start, it would be a survival map because you have all your perks there from the Wonder Fizz. You have Pack-A-Punch, you have your crack. Ooh. It feels like, okay, here's what I think. I think the later we go on, we'll start getting survival maps and they'll do that. They'll take parts of the bigger maps to. and make them survival maps. Like Nact, right? Oh, I think, yes. think Nact originally was going to be a survival map. And I think it was going to be the exact same system they had for the village, where all the things are there, right? Yeah. Obviously, we don't need all the perk machines because we have the Wonder Fizz. And the way that works now is like, you know, you can pick whatever you want and you can have all your perks anyway. Yeah. So I think it's that's such an opportunity for them just to make a fun survival map. And Agreed. it'd be pretty... Um, it'd be, it, it, I don't know. I think they should do it and like... If, I don't know if they're, they're thinking that, though. I think they're just thinking, ah, oh, this is part of this map and stuff now. But, like, you know if they have ever had the idea? 100% right. do it. And do it for the other maps, because, like, again, I think with, like, Cold War Zombies, um, it's not, like, it's it's good as in, like, you know how Origins is good? Like, there's a lot to do to get set up, but once you're set up, it's fun. Yes. It's never right. just, like, get in, turn on power once, <laughs> and then, you know, just kill zombies. Yeah. And I think the survival map feel that need uh, yeah of I, just I, killing I, definitely, I definitely think that d machine has that feeling of just you know you turn on the power and just whatever and then you just survive because the right. wonder weapon mm. of that map not great but it's not like bad either it's just kind of like a mid-tier wonder weapon i know it can help you mm. out with the camping strategies and like the the speed cola room and things like that but it's i don't know i the, just found myself not yeah i found yeah I, I found myself not going for the wonder weapon on d machine a every game yeah. like i want to go for the wonder weapon every game in firebase z yeah yeah no definitely i mean are we i'm, I'm guessing have we all used the ray k yet of course yeah yo yeah i got mine like a second it's... game <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Oh. uh it's so it's so cool first of all i thought it was going to be really underwhelming mm. i was wrong I was wrong, and I seen someone on Twitter saying that one of there was like a like a bit of intel that's talking about the weapon, and it's actually across from the Baby Maker from Shangri La, really? and the Rank on Mark Three from Gerald Crowley, because in the Dark Ether they found the schematics for their weapons and they merged them together, so that's why it kind of resembles the Baby Maker oh, a wee bit with that spinning thing, what and then you know how it has the effects of um. Like of the Rega Mark Three, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why. That's why, That's and I absolutely really love that. Cool, actually. That's really cool. But what, Man, the intel is underrated in this game. I swear. I want. I want to go back and collect it all. Like I want to go to the machine. I want to go to yeah. you know, yeah, uh, and stuff. I want. I want to get it all, but it just <laughs> it seems like a lot of work. There's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. I mean, there's hundreds of intel. You know. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I think. I think the, I think the main. Okay, I'll go. For it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main crime here, they did my my guy the normal ray gun dirty. He's well, not in the map. That's what I was gonna <laughs> mention was this, and I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. And chat, correct me if I'm wrong. We were talking about this on live stream the other day. This is the first map since just the beginning of time for the Ether storyline that the ray gun, the normal ray gun, isn't on the map. That's I think crazy. You're right. That's absolutely crazy to me. That the normal ray gun, a staple of Call of Duty Zombies, is not an ether map. And you know what? We don't need it. 
we don't need it. We don't need it no, because we have the ray gun. The ray is not on this map. It amplifies the power and the utility mm -hmm. and the validity of the ray right. K. Yeah, because so, I, I, I think, like, tell me what you guys think, but I think the reason they took it out was because they knew what would happen. They were like, okay, we add it in again. It's just gonna be another D machine where people camp in a corner and use it. Yep. Yeah. And it's like we we don't want that again. Let's actually get them to use the actual one through weapon mm -hmm. and make them actually, you know, camp with a combination of training. Because I find myself, I can camp until like sixty, but then after sixty, it's like it's just way. I know I know the zombies get to their max speed at fifty three, but for some reason at that at that sixty mark, I feel like I need to go to a training spot because there's so and like many run guys. about instead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The chat is saying whether well, ray gun mm -hmm. is better, even though the ray gun might technically be better. I mean, the Ray K is still pretty damn good. I mean, I I like I like to see a comparison. Actually, I want to see which one is better. I mean, obviously, at first glance, it looks like the Ray the Ray gun from D Machine is better, but um, I still want to find out the stats because the Ray K kicks ass. I but. mean, I think I think I think the Ray K is more versatile with what it does. Like, I think of Insta Kill is going right. to do a lot more than a Ray gun with Insta Kill. Because it's essentially just an assault rifle, and like mm. over, over, overall, I think the Ray K is a lot more unique. It has a lot more functionality to it. And I, 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 I the thing is, we'll never know because I don't think we'll see the Ray gun on Firebase C. And here's the thing: Do you think we won't see it, the Ray gun again, in Cold War Zombies? That's what, what people think. <laughs> uh, yeah, because that brings up the question. What do you think like, about that, Magna? What do you think about that? I mean, I think the reason they didn't put it in this one is especially just for the reason to, like, not take away. They wanted to, like, I think they want a specific Wonder Weapon for the map. And they didn't want to maybe make it too overpowered. Um, and maybe make yeah. it a little too redundant. But going forward, I would, I'm starting to feel like they may not. They really Here, may not. Here's my thing, right? When it comes to main maps, I think... We might not get them, but if they do survival maps, I think we'll see the ray gun in survival maps. If they do yeah. little survival maps. Yeah, I yeah. But I, I mean, agree. Jason, what do you think? Like, do you think? Do you I think, think like that? Like that's what's gonna happen? Or I think because the ray K is the main weapon on this map, and the ray gun's not mm -hmm. here. I think yeah, I don't think the ray gun's coming back for for future maps because now Treyarch, it, they're breaking the mold. They're really changing things mm -hmm. up with this game, and it's very mm -hmm. satisfying. Actually, you wouldn't mm -hmm. think, right? just removing the ray gun all together just completely changes the dynamic of a map and the dynamic of zombies as a whole. And it's actually really fun that I can use other it's, things and I yeah. can be more diverse for lack of a better word in my it, play style. It's almost like, um, uh, how do I put it? Like, um, well, the ray gun, you always have to use the ray gun cause that's the best way to get the high rounds. Right. Mm -hmm. With this, you can use the ray care, whatever you want, really. And it's, it's it's really refreshing as well. Absolutely. And also something I really like is that I can almost get guaranteed to have the Rayk by round, round 10. Yeah. Because there's so many ways to get it, yeah. which I love. Got the trials, because, the um, blocks. Had, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. the quest. You can build it, which I haven't done yet. I haven't built it. You know, the uh, thing about the have... building oh, quest okay. is that it's round gated. And that's kind mm. of unfortunate because you got to wait for a mangler to spawn in around like round 15, 16, or mm. 17. And he drops a part for you. So it's a little unfortunate that it's round gated, but you know, by the time you get the Ray K on like round twenty or whatever, it comes out of perfect time, so that you can do a shitload of damage and the rounds are a little bit higher and it helps you out. So I guess there's mm. that positive to it, I suppose. Yeah. Um. Um. But, I mean, yeah. what what do we think of Tombstone? Yeah, I, I wanted to mention that next. It's weird, but I like it kind of. Hmm. I, I mean, but... Magna, what are your what are your experiences being with it? Okay, so um, I upgraded it fairly fast. Like by the second game, I already already had it to tier three. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I saw where Syndicate said that he really thought it was bad in solo. Uh, but I mean, my impressions with it when I've used it on solo, I've been able to get to my body without dying or whatever. I mean, I've been able yeah, to... any hassle. Yeah, any hassle. I mean. And 
you, you upgrade by tier three and you, you get your salvage and stuff back, which I don't think I've experienced that part of it. Do you actually go to like a bag or something and pick stuff up? Or yeah, how does like, that work? Just like Black Ops 2, you go to your tombstone and you pick up your tombstone. Okay. That's yeah. what I figured. Okay. But I, I just don't, I don't get the, if anybody's hating on it, I don't, and I don't know. I just, did, I didn't understand that tweet that he sent out. I didn't, yeah. uh, I don't know. You, I just, know what, you know what's so weird about Tombstone is that I uh, see how do how do I describe it? It's who's who. It's who's who, <laughs> but right. I don't mind that it's who's who. You know, like no, for whatever reason, makes, yeah. this feels better than who's who. Mm -hmm. Like I can get Here's... to my body better with this than I can on Tombstone, or than I can on who's who, mm -hmm. and I don't know why that is the case. Like it's a good it, it feels easier, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it feels like the zombies aren't spawning right in front of you. It feels like they're chasing after you. So by yeah. the time you get to your body, you have a bit of leeway to get yourself up. And once you right. get yourself up, one thing I'll add, this is a little thing. I love how it's the Mob of the Dead noise where you go down. And it's like the ghost uh, noise. Yes. If you oh, actually listen yeah. carefully, when you go down, yeah, that is cool. That's a good sound effect. And something that I don't think is utilized enough is when you go down in it and revive yourself, your weapons have full ammo. Also true. So, mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. For the Ray K, it costs ten grand to buy more ammo, right? Oof. I know, I know, it's gonna cost more to buy your perks and stuff. But you know, if you're in a pinch and you need ammo and you don't have enough for, you know, to get get or whatever, just go into tomb. Just go into like your last stand or whatever, and then go okay. quickly grab your body and then you have ammo. That's what I really like. About it. I think that's really cool. Yeah, if you don't but, mind sacrificing a couple perks, that is. Yeah, if you don't mind sacrificing a couple of perks, but I think that's really Ooh. cool. I okay. one thing I don't know is there is there a jingle for it? Yes, there is. It's OG. Mm -hmm. It's the OG jingle. Yep. You have to stand next to it. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. faint, but you can hear it. Okay, maybe they'll turn it up then. I know, because yeah. I know in the files, that's where they found it. There's, um, like, that's how all the stuff got leaked. Yeah. There's the Tombstone perk jingles, and there's the normal one. And then there's the Dark Ether version. I think that was fan-made, wasn't it? I, I'm pretty sure that, I, that I Dark know. Ether one was fan-made. Um... Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that's what I think. Uh, we had Jack Lobster in the chat here saying it yeah. shouldn't cost money to get your stuff back. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't yeah. used Tombstone on co-op yet to that extent. Like, I haven't bled out completely with Tombstone on co-op yet, so I didn't know so, that cost money. Yeah. It costs money? Oh, wow. So it costs yeah, money it costs, to recover. Oh, it happened to me. It cost 25000 wasn't it? I think it's 25000 25000 to get no, your stuff no, back? No, that's, no, 2500 Oh, right, right. Oh, I was going to say, I would never use that perk on co-op if that was the case. <laughs> Not really. Cow. The, perk, the perk on co-op glitch with me where um, I didn't have it on. And I went down and Jason, we were playing together. I didn't have the perk on. Yeah. I didn't have tombstone on. I went down. It gave me a tombstone for some reason. I ran up to buy it and it took all my <laughs> points away. <laughs> it took all my points away. And I respawned them with a Barrett. So I literally had nothing. Good to uh, see that the Samantha pretty... glitch is still a thing in in Cold War. Been like ten years and they can't fix their uh, their glitch. I saw someone but, pay eight k for it, so the price must vary then. Like the price must fluctuate, maybe depending on the round you're depending on. Depending on what you have, right? Or, or maybe like how many players are in the game. I don't know. Well, the reason I have it is more because I want to save my salvage. It's not really because I care about points right. so much. It's more because because mm -hmm. when you go down, you lose a revive right mm -hmm. with tombstone right. i can just buy myself a, I, i'm all right spending a bunch of points on my perks and then having all that salvage just like to decide i like that you keep yourself revive too when you revive yourself yeah that's the best thing about it that's the best thing about it mm -hmm. um the, I, originally the way i thought it was going to work was i thought it was going to work if you revive yourself to keep all your perks other than tombstone but i was wrong oh uh, right that's yeah. what's sad that that's also really mm. sad that you don't keep every perk. I thought it was going to have some sort of aftertaste effect, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Uh, the chat is saying, did they remove the crafting benches? I couldn't find any. Uh, no, there's there's four crafting they're, benches. They're the everywhere. <laughs> uh, there are four crafting the same benches with, on the map. Mm -hmm. The same with so. uh, something something I like that they've moved on, talking about crafting benches and things like that. They really added in a lot more, you know, uh, armor stands and crafting tables in this map than yes. the machine at least. Like, yeah. it feels like you don't have to run to one spot to get it. You can I go anywhere that. pretty much, and there'll be one nearby. Like that's that's something I really really like. 
I yeah, absolutely that and the armory. love that, man. Mm -hmm. I Arsenal too. is so important for yeah. Cold War, and there's four locations mm -hmm. for that one, too. Exactly. You don't have to keep, like you said, running to the same exact location and possibly be in a bad situation. Going down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. One, one thing I find myself doing on higher rounds is that, you know, the wonder fizz. That's why I run to get my perks. Yeah. I like, you know yeah. when you're in that house, yeah. it's quite intense. That house Because, like, all yeah. the zombies are trying to spawn in, and it's like, oh, I gotta get out my perks, and you're, like, spamming the button. Yeah. The like, village like, is just fighting along. Like, the village mm. in itself is just super crazy, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, in the early rounds, okay, this is pretty chill. Oh, maybe I can, like, hoard up zombies here. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And you get to, like, round 20, it's like, no. Like, just, <laughs> there's just so many guys there. You, you're better off training in, like, a car. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> car. It, it's just so chaotic, especially when you got mimics pulling you across. The uh, uh, that's yeah. so annoying, man. It's like if you're gonna what? grab me, at least do damage. Like he just grabs me yeah, for no he reason. Doesn't even do damage. Doesn't even do damage. Well, yeah. Mm. What do we think about the bosses then? I guess I guess we kind of know about the mimics. I think they're really annoying, <laughs> to be honest. I, here's the thing: they're kind of annoying, but they're easy to take down if you use the exactly. right weapons. Exactly. That's what I said. Use any like, weapon. Like if you use the Gallo, use the Howard, use the Mac. Even the Mac Ten. I actually was playing with the Mac Ten yesterday. That thing melts in high rounds, and I'm really surprised. So you put Brain Rot on your weapons, and Brain Rot is the elemental type that you need to do extra damage to the mimics. So oh, just like on D uh, Machine, uh, yeah. Deadwire was f well, for the Megatons. Mm -hmm. You have Brain Rot for the mimics and Napalm mm -hmm. Burst for the Manglers. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Oh, that's because I found that, you know, the Molotovs. The Molotovs yes. did a lot of damage to them, so I'm guessing that's, like, the fire. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe they're moving towards fire, they're not, like, really good against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I mean, I, I, I don't know if there's, for... like, a story behind that, but... I don't know, maybe... No. Oh, you know what? Maybe because it's fire, and the Mangler comes from Gorod Krovi, and the dragon shoots fire. <laughs> and then it's gonna get PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well that's like game theory right there <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um it just, oh. you just see fire and it's like flashbacks of gorod krovi and then like it just it's just his face it in. you see the dragon <laughs> you see the dragon dude i want another oh. dragon boss fight i think it'd be kind of cool um Man, that was, I mean, uh, we got an interesting here's a point here in the chat real quick that i wanted to touch let's on let's hear it and the chat is saying, Manglers still don't count as elites yet. So, this is the pro this is one problem, and it's a glitch, I think. I've heard, yeah. There's a problem with, with Firebase Z, and I don't know if it's a problem with Onslaught, but Onslaught counts Mimics and Manglers as elite enemies. So, you would assume Firebase Z does, right? So, what's kind of happening right now is people are trying to get their elite kills on the Mimics and on the, on the Manglers, and no camo tracking is happening. So people are saying, oh, so these guys aren't elites, but then Onslaught counts them as elites, but then you don't get the camo progression. Like, it's kind of glitched right now, and people are kind of waiting yeah. for Treyarch to fix that or do something about that. Because, yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of sucky. Because I don't, I, I don't want to play D-Machine for my yeah, own I don't, Ether. No. Yeah. I don't. I, I want to play Firebase Z. No. <laughs> Because yeah. my thing is now, my main priority is uh, like uh, Firebase Z. Like, I, I'll play D Machine again, like, in a few months. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. I, I've just played so much D Machine that, like, I think, I think I'm sticking for everyone when I say Firebase Z is like our version of Nuketown or Raid, you know, for the next, like, few months until something else comes out. Maybe, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Like, just something to go into and just play, you know? Because I think everybody. In this in this podcast right now, and everybody watching in the chat can agree, Firebase Z is better than D Machine. Definitely, I think everybody can agree with yeah. that. I think the zombies community overwhelming majority thinks Firebase Z is a great map. Hmm. So. And I seen that the gaming revolution to put this on Twitter, but Black Ops Cold War Zombies is the most has been is the okay. So you know how you search terms and stuff. Mm. And you can see what the rating of this is every year, like of how high it searched. Cold War is by, is behind Black Ops 1 and 2, but it's in front of 3. So more people are into oh. Cold War right now, the more people were into Black Ops 3. Really? Wow. That's very interesting. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm. So I that's like pretty that, cool. They're and, doing something right, obviously. I mean, well, Black Ops 4 it wasn't really a challenge because Dead of the Night, but... Um, 
<laughs> Bruh, taking a hit at the end of the night. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I think besides the Rise and Drag, this is probably the best DLC one we've gotten. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. yeah. Is, I think, I think really it's a tie between. I mean, people have got their personal favorites, but for me, the Rise and Drac is like not the last really good map, but that's the last map that blew me away, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of this overall package, yeah. Zetsubo was good from like an atmosphere perspective. Gord Crowley was simple and fun. Revelations, going back to it, really wasn't as bad as I thought it was. It's just old maps, like I guess, and I can enjoy that play style. And it was fun to go for high rounds on it. True, but. I think it's definitely better than any Black Ops 4 map. And yeah, I would say so. I think it's better than all the Black Ops 1 maps. Oh. Yeah. Same with World at War. The only the only thing challenging it is Origins, which is really hard to beat for me. And I mean, I think Firebase C is a good map. I don't know if I don't if just personally origins. I don't know if me personally, I can put it up there in like the greatest of all time right now. I still have to play it a little bit more. I got to do the Easter egg. I haven't done the Easter egg yet. Fully, yeah. But I got to play it more. I got to enjoy it a little bit more. And then I'll be like, okay, is this a top 10 map? Is this a top five map? Like, you know, because it has potential. It definitely has potential to be yeah. a top 10 or top five okay. map. Well, tell, tell me what you guys think of this. It's a better Gorod Krovi. Yes. Yeah. Do we, yeah, do we think that? I, I think so. <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah. Garage Kobe, it's a fun map. I like it. But, like, just, this map is just so seamless to me. Right. Garage Kobe has a good yeah. flow, too. Don't get me wrong. And the Easter egg is challenging. It's funny. This is, like, easy yes. Garage Kobe. Because Garage right. Kobe's Easter egg is challenging. Yeah. And then this one's like, oh, okay, you just kind of do whatever. And you just kind of, like, you play the game, essentially. And it tells you what to do. It's very easy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, especially because the similarities with Grod Krovi, too, with the whole Russian aesthetic. It's a military base, mm -hmm. and you got the Manglers, and you got the, the – literally half the Wonder Weapon is the Ray Gun Mark III. And, you know, it's – you know, it's – yeah, Grod Krovi two mm -hmm. kind of. And I think it's kind of funny how uh, JC was part of the the team for first – Oh, yeah, <laughs> I've seen that, yeah. Uh, so it, it, was, all, um, it all yeah. makes sense, man, you know. It's all, it's all coming together. Yeah. <laughs> it's all coming together. Um, I was going to say something there. Oh, it's really good. Oh, such a good point. It's gone. No. I can't really let that happen. Um, but real come quick, back while me. you remember, can we agree that, like, people make a way too big a deal over the first in the world thing? A wee bit. Like, everyone's going to do the Easter egg. Everyone's right. going to do it eventually. There's going to be tutorials. You know, I think it's awesome that people oh you're the first one to do it that's great that's awesome like that's more power yeah to you. you know you'll get maybe some extra views or whatever but then like after that it's like oh you know whatever but the thing that i right. think is the bad part about it is how people uh react to it and they're like mm. oh well this person's first in the world oh well they you know they probably you know they're data miners or oh they yeah. you know they're just bullshit you know Oh, how yeah. come? Yeah. How come my favorite YouTuber wasn't yeah. first in the world because he was streaming the Easter egg? Like, like yeah. shut up! Like, come here, on now. Here's here's, here's my thing, right? And I don't know if you agree with this, but I think when Easter eggs come out and the whole race thing happens, like you to beat it, I think it's one of the best things the community can do, and it's one of the most toxic. Yeah. Yep. It's both, right? And there's not even a middle ground that there can ever be like, oh, this person won. That's a shame for this guy, but oh well. And I think a lot of the community have that mindset, but then there's like a select few who are just like, you know, just awful. Like, oh, um, well, you cheated, you know, you didn't beat this, you know, and it's like, come on. It's yeah. a, you know, then and day it's pixels, you know, <laughs> it's pixels. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you think about it, Magnum? Yeah, I, like it. Okay, being first in the world makes sense because it's going to make you like feel good which it mm -hmm. that's a yeah. good feeling you're, you're gonna want that anybody's gonna want that right yeah um, get that dopamine flowing. but like i mean at the end of the day like i, I feel like just worrying about it and, and everyone rushing at the very beginning that's what causes this uh these creators to like turbo like you know you know 
this is just <laughs> it's just madness like why, what are we doing like let's just have fun like why uh, do we yeah. have to be in here to jump to the yeah. it's more than about like being more successful with your content and and actively like yeah. showing that i mean that's a good thing but it's just like come on dude like at the end of the day we're all we're all here together like exactly yeah. right i think i think uh, a logical way to put it for me right again here's something i think the bigger for the bigger youtubers it matters right. more because yeah. it's their job right right and at the end of the day they can love the game and we all know they love the game right we can tell by watching them play the game they love it right but at the end of the day if they can solve that easter easter egg first and make a guide ka-ching you know like like they're yeah. they're making I bank mean, from no, that easter absolutely, egg absolutely man and i absolutely. understand that too yeah it's like i, I completely yeah. understand that no no hate right. towards that they're grinding they're absolutely. making money you know playing yeah. video games all the respect yep. to the world in them right. but when the aspect of money gets involved it that's where the competition comes from i don't think it's from so much be being first in the world i think it's because once you get that done you get your guide out That's and then point. people watch it yeah i think yeah. Which, I, I agree with that i think i think yeah, yeah. in part i definitely agree with that because i think also I, the whole the obviously whole, it's a great like the, the, yeah, it's the like gray a gray area story. yeah like i, mm, I know what you're yeah. talking about there but it's like the whole i think it's also the sentiment that people try to establish right because yeah. i think this whole first in the world mentality why it's still alive today is because and i could be wrong about this this is just what i think my opinion that because people want to kind of still go back to the glory days of of mm -hmm. call of duty zombies that being first in the world in garage Krovi was the biggest thing ever being first in the world on Dorazin Drac was the biggest thing ever because black ops 3 was the peak of the zombies community you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like a little part of me thinks the community hangs on to that because it's an old sentiment that we want to keep going forward in a, in, a, in a new game. But people just take it a little too far, I think. And I think a lot of people yeah. get actually genuinely mad for no fucking reason, and it's kind of un unfortunate. But, um, right. We have Jack in the chat here saying, Greg FPS made a good point on Twitter. If the steps were data mined first in the world is irrelevant. I yeah. agree. But I, I half agree. And the reason why is because you don't have to look at the data mine steps. You can solve the Easter egg by yourself. So it's yeah, because it's pretty straightforward. It's not irrelevant. It, it wouldn't be irrelevant. If, if, you, if you're first in the world and you didn't look at the data mine Easter egg, then, it's, yeah. then being first in the world wouldn't be irrelevant. I mean, it definitely doesn't have as much status as I think a lot of people give it. But yeah, it's not irrelevant. I don't think I I, Here, I I understand the point. So I like half agree, but like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Magna, what do you think of that? Like, yeah, I kind of think what Greg means is like it's irrelevant because then no one's gonna believe you if you said you didn't know it was out there. See, it's like just yeah. because it's out there, it's like oh well. Yeah, but you can't. Pr like, I don't know. You hey, can't prove that you didn't. You know what? <laughs> Fuck other people. <laughs> right. Well, that's like, actually, think, like, you know, I, I mean, yeah. that's what it comes down to at the end of the day, man. Like, it, yeah. just, if you know you did it. Right. And you, you, you've solved Shit. stuff. And, the, and people are like, oh, well, you just cheated. Pat, Fuck I, mean, you, I yeah. know what I did. Like, like <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You shouldn't have to prove I think, it. But I think as well. I think, to be honest, right? You know, the bigger the bigger content creators right i think and the way the way i think of it as well this is another good point they've built themselves such a platform where they can generate income from doing their favorite thing in the world mm -hmm. that if they yeah. were to cheat and that got leaked by the person that helped them cheat their their career maybe not over but they would lose a lot of respect and i don't know if that's to them, maybe that's not worth getting first in the world. Do you kind of get what I mean? I think so. <laughs> okay, so what I mean is, right? So let's say, let's say, okay, so JC and that were first in the world, right? First of all, I don't believe they uh, data mined, right? First of all, I don't believe the data. I didn't get some of the data mined for them, right? Or anything like that. Right, right. But let, let, let me think in a, let, I'm going to think in like a content creator way, right? Like, okay, you are going to give me the steps first and I will get my, do it first, upload my guide, you know, very successful, mm. right? Okay. But also what I'm thinking is, is what if in a few months down the line, you have messages or whatever, saved from our conversation or whatever, or you recorded my voice or something like that, and it gets leaked that I mm. cheated. 
We all know what the zombie community is like. We all hop on one thing. Like, I mean, I think I'm alright. I'm, I'm alright saying this. We won't go too much into it, but okay, right? The the whole Darlick thing, right? Where he kind of copy copied someone. Mm-hmm. A lot of people jumped on that, right? Right. And I think it'd be the same thing with this. And I think content creators, the last thing they want to do is piss off the zombie community because they're so passionate about stuff. And that's the thing. It's a passionate community. And I think this happens with every community, right? You have the passionate community and then you have just the absolute like toxic community at the same time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, mm-hmm. if, if it were to be something like that where it's like, oh, this guy data mine, he cheated on the Easter egg, you know, whatever. Then I think people would be a little bit upset. And it's like... I don't know. I, I think it's just abs- it's absurd to me that people even data mine in the first place. I think, like, yeah, it ruins people. F- it, it ruins people's experience if they choose to look at it. And it's like, come on now. Um, Jack yeah. actually put the full quote from Greg in the chat here, saying, "If the Easter egg steps leak first in the world, doesn't matter. I'm going to enjoy the hunt with my team without knowing anything uh, to actually enjoy the map. Trek needs to make it unleakable for." Uh, unleakable or at least the easter egg when the map drops a new map drops every few months and it's sad yeah no okay i now that i see his whole tweet i agree track needs to make the easter egg beatable on release and we don't need any data leakers and yeah just go into the map enjoying whatever you want to do you know yeah um i mean true yeah but i i still think like the whole, yeah, the first in the world thing. Yes, it's kind of irrelevant, but at the same time, it's cool to be like, oh, yeah, that's the guy who who did it first, you know? Mm. But sometimes I think people people put up on too high of a pedestal, and then they'll, 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 they'll go crazy over it, right? And yeah. I, I don't know. I just, that's what I think. But, I mean, one thing before we move on to something even more exciting than Firebase, the Express Onslaught. Express onslaught? <laughs> Dude, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I guess to kind of just finish things off on that topic is like, again, Jason, what you mean is why would people data mine? I could, I could understand for Black Ops Four, and that's purely because I, I felt like with Black Ops Four, we just weren't getting any information. I felt like we weren't getting anything. See, I that's even, my thing. I, I, I get. What, I know where you're coming from. I don't even get the Black Ops Four data mining. I don't. I, okay, I, I, I can get. I, I can get. I can get that. Yeah. Because it ruins what Treyarch wants to do. Because I remember, I, I remember that the Alpha Omega ending cutscene audio got leaked, mm-hmm. and yep. I remember yeah. that. And I remember that. It didn't ruin the map for me, obviously, but like I, I think, I think as well as like the person's enjoyment of the map would be so much better if they didn't listen into it. But then again, it's like there's that like I'm part of me where I really want to know stuff. Yeah. Right. Like you know, you know if I heard like all oh, DLC four ending audio, Rick Toffins alive or whatever, I would want to listen to that so much. Yeah, I under like. Th- but I would try not to. I I get why I it's it's sad that I get why people do it because it's like people want instant views and people want yeah yeah, yeah no, no it's kind of right. like that cheating the system type of thing right where it's like oh well you know i'm i'm somewhere i shouldn't be and you know this is where I, i'm poking my nose in the data and i i'm, I'm leaking content that shouldn't be leaked and it's, yeah that kind of mindset is is shit to me and you know yeah. I, I okay i feel bad for yeah i feel bad for track and i feel bad for the developers who work really hard, work hard. to to yeah. make their content and to make their product the best it can be and, yeah, you know it's just it's just sad that people data mine. And okay, uh, guys, what what do we think of this then? What do we think of this? I would never data mine myself because I think it's quite you know, like I don't pathetic. I guess like why would you do it right? You're ruining the experience for a lot more people. But if I if I'm if I see the audio or like if I see something quite tempting to click on, I'm guilty for that just because I'm curious. I'm the same. That's my thing. If, if I could, if there was a button for me to press to make it so that no nothing got leaked, I would press it. Yeah. Because if I knew there was nothing out yeah. there, I wouldn't care. True. But the fact that you see it, I think as people, you're just naturally interested. Well, and... the thing is, I'll see a video like that and then I'll click it, right? And then, oh yeah, so we got this from the data mine and we got this from the code off. Mm. That's well, me. They... <laughs> That's me. You just have strong will. No, I'm yeah. serious. Like, absolutely. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I just, I'm just like, 
Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, guys. So we we hacked the game, and you know, I I I'm I'm, I'm ruining Treyarch's plan, and it's like okay, because you know the zombies team, the zombies team is very passionate, and yeah. um, you know, it's just whatever. It, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like whatever, dude. Like obviously you don't have anything better to do with your time, so you just do this. Um, yeah, like, it might that might sound really fucking harsh, but it's like. I, I don't know. Listen, for all you know, I might be a secret like data miner, and you just cross my heart, and it's like, oh, come on, Jason. <laughs> hey, you know what? I speak. I speak my mind. You speak the truth. I speak my mind. You speak um, the truth. <laughs> yeah. So, Cold War is a really good game for the amount of time they had to make it. No, I agree with that too, and I think yeah, yeah. That's I think very people, true. I think people maybe take advantage of that who are data miners. They'll be like, oh, maybe some, mm-hmm. you know, some loose ends aren't tied up. You know, they didn't cross yeah, because this, so rush. this eye. You know. Uh, hmm. What do you think about this whole thing, Magna? Man, I cause see, I think Bo3 really popularized, like, probably first in the world. Just because a lot of those YouTubers were coming up, because right. you got to think about it, like Black Ops Two, and I wasn't there, but that was Me before really YouTube is really a major platform. Mm-hmm. By Bo Three, yeah. YouTube was established as like, hey, we're we're streaming now. We're we're um, you're able to like, you know, you know, and these guys were small, like they're fa- fairly small. I mean, think about even probably Noah at the beginning of Bo Three and to now. You know what I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. So, yeah. It was kind of that golden age for like YouTube and zombies to kind of like mesh together. And then now we look back and we're like, man, BO3 was so great. I think it was just that that time of just, yeah. Like, it's the now, time. Right. And then after that, it's just gotten crazy because of that. Yeah. That success. Absolutely. I've been very true. I, the thing is, what I find as well is like, it's only, it's really only with, um, uh trip games that people really want leak stuff yeah. the one the one thing i remember of infinite warfare is that the cut ending cut scene for shallow shuffle got leaked two weeks before the map came out really i don't know that yeah they added in the cut season an update and someone managed to get it out oh. and it was like it was all butchered and stuff like the the audio is all broken and all that but like you can make it out and it was the actual cut scene so even before they got on the map it's like well my story's gone like you know, like uh, give it but, a break, data miners. Jeez. Yeah, I think I think Treyarch has that propensity though for like creating something so unique and so likable. I guess that people just can't help themselves. Well, yes. Yeah, I <laughs> you know, I, I, I can uh, I can imagine <laughs> as well. Like for like data miners and stuff, maybe it's like a cookie jar. Like you yeah. tell yourself you're gonna have one. You, you know, you put your hand in, you have one. Okay, that's fine. And then you see the cookie jar again, and you're like, oh. You see the cookie <laughs> jar, and you go, is that Zombies Chronicles 2? Zombies Chronicles 2? You <laughs> see it opening. 3? <laughs> 3? <laughs> they just call it Zombies Chronicles 3. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the chat's saying here, I think they should make the OG Ray Gun Easter Egg unlockable, so it's a reward for finishing the Easter Egg. Uh, I mean, that's a cool idea. Like, you get a free ray gun at the end of an Easter egg, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like, all these Easter eggs are going to be ending in a cutscene or an X-Fill sequence, so... I think it'll yeah, be both I after seeing... Uh, yeah, I don't think there's going to be, like, that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... You're not going to be able to continue your game. But uh, I do like the idea. Yeah. That's cool. Hmm. Oh, um, man. So, I mean, Firebase is cool. We, had, we talked yeah. about that a lot. Um... Dude, one thing I do want to mention again about Firebase Z, and then I'll talk about a couple other season one stuff because there is there is some yeah. other content. There's other stuff going on. Um, so for those of you who don't know, me and Cosmic were streaming the Easter egg yesterday, right? We we're trying to hunt the Easter egg, and yeah, we ended up figuring it out up until the mimic memory step, and so what we <laughs> what we originally thought, right? Pain. And we see in all these Pain. tutorials now. We originally thought it was just RNG for the names. And, you and that's what everyone was saying as well. That's what everyone, that's what everyone well. said. And so we were going off this idea that there's like over 20 names for the Mimic step. And then we're just getting unlucky. Later to find out, you have to capture Mimics in certain locations to get the certain names to download the certain mm-hmm. memories. Yeah. And so, now I'm sad. Because we could have so, beaten the Easter egg yeah. yesterday if uh, we knew that. 
So Magna, like, uh, we kind of explained it to you what the step it. was about. Right. It was kind of like, yeah. it's essentially the step is Pokemon, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the best way I can describe oh, it is, man. is well, first of all, you have to do this oh. preset thing, right? Where you have to pick up this item. I have to wait around to actually start engaging in the step you need to do for catching the Pokemon, right? For, we're going to call them Pokemon, right? And you know how in Pokemon, there's different parts of grass where you can catch different Pokemon in it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Essentially, essentially, it's exactly like that. Yes. And the way you know, the way you know as well, is because there'll be with well, the mimics. Obviously, they disguise themselves as items, right? Right. What will happen is you'll come across an area with a bunch of items on the floor that don't do anything, and one of them will be a mimic. Mimic. Right. Uh, that's when you know that's the one you need. Yeah. Then you capture that one in the Pokeball, take it back to the Pokemon Center, upload the memory, <laughs> and then and then you have to skip that round to the next round and do it again and again. Take it back to the Pokemon. <laughs> so we have the right idea. Oh God. That it was just absolute chaos. And me and James, we could have been first in the world. You know, we could have been first in the world. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, we, we, we would have got keys for data mining. I mean, we did the serum. Yeah. Here's what I think, man. I'm gonna be honest. That is the most. Um, that is the most amount of Easter egg steps I have figured out mm. by yourself. It, by myself in a in a thing. Nice. I, I don't normally Easter egg hunt, right? And uh, I, yeah. I just normally make tutorials about like, oh, how to get the water weapon, how to pack a punch, like whatever, right? I normally focus on that. But I was like, oh, I'll give it a try this time. And like, this is the most I've ever found for an Easter egg. And I'm like, Jesus Christ! Is is it because Cold War's Easter egg is like easier? Or is it just because I, think, I have like three thousand yeah. IQ now? Like I it's just well, <laughs> like I was saying, like I was saying uh, earlier on. I think I think Cold War Zombies are, is going to take this direction where the Easter eggs they kind of tell you what to do because mm -hmm. it makes sense. It makes sense that the game opens up to new players and tries to tell a story without making yeah. up absolute nonsense that has no correlation with steps and stuff like that. Yeah. I also think this has something to do with how Black Ops 4 performed and how the Easter eggs kind of took priority over the maps in some aspects. Yeah, definitely. And also the also the fact that Jason Blundell's gone, and I think the team has gotten a lot more creative since he's left. And that's that's sad to say. Yeah. Isn't but... that crazy though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Jason we thought Blundell, he was, like, I... the guy we associate with Call of Duty Zombies for the, the majority of the life cycle of the glory days of Call of Duty, right? Mm -hmm. He's gone, and now the community is having a shitload more fun right now. Like, let that sink in. Like, I I, I understand. Like, maybe you know, oh, it's you know, it's, all good things come to an end, and you know, maybe I you know maybe people aren't gonna like things as much as they used to, and then and it just takes it just takes it, one little change, I suppose. And I don't know. I still respect the hell out of Jason. Mundell. I know. I love Jason. I wish he'd come back. <laughs> I, dude, you know what, dude? Yeah, I want him on yeah. the podcast. Yeah, I want, cool. I want Jason Blundell the on the thing podcast, is, man. I want to talk to him about his brain. I want to talk to him about Black Ops Four. I want to just be like Jason. Thing, Jason. We're going. We're going to lunch right <laughs> Here's now. The thing, Jason. Here's the thing, Jason. What? But there's He's two Jasons. <laughs> oh my god. There's two Jasons. Literally, he is impossible to track down. Yeah. He has no social media. I've I mean, he might be living in England, because he's from England, obviously. Maybe he's in England somewhere. I, I just as gotta, far I just as gotta, all things I, too. I just gotta pop a UAV. <laughs> just gotta pop your Jason Blundell tracker. Yeah. Oh my god. Your Jason Blundell track. Oh my god. Really? Is he ever gonna come back to the limelight, or are we ever gonna? I. Because I... I think he's to. working on new projects, but like I don't know. Yeah. I want to see what he's up to. Yeah, no, Jason. I'm <laughs> literally this. looking him up right now. It. What is what is he up to? Here we go, chat. What is he up to? I found his IMDb page. Ooh. Uh. See what's what's your most recent thing, Mister Blundell? <laughs> um, wow! So he hasn't worked on anything else since Tiger Toten. Oh, he but didn't you leave the else. studio? Didn't you? Well, I think you. Okay, but first of all, we got a message in the chat from a man Zazu, and he is saying, "Reminds me when a show writer leaves a show, new one comes, and it makes it better than the last season." Yeah, I think so, I think it's a good comparison, yeah. and it's like the old show yeah. writer wasn't bad. It's just like now, 
it's improved. He, you know, he, for the time for the time that it was, like we loved all the cryptid stuff, like you know, like all the all the hard defined stuff back then. Right. And now we're more like, okay, we just want gameplay and we want to enjoy stuff again. Right. Mm, yeah. Like I think I think Rise and Draca was a good balance between what Jason liked to do with storytelling and gameplay design. Mm-hmm. And I think every map after that, I think Black Ops three maps are all home runs, pretty much, right? Yeah, I did too. I think I think Black Ops four. That's when Jason was. I, I don't I don't want to say it, but maybe there's too much Jason Blundell in the maps for me, and I never thought I'd say that. Maybe I think I think he. I, 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 I don't know. The but, thing is, I am again one of those people who don't hate Black Ops four like everybody else. I, I yeah. Like, I think it's a good game, actually. I think it's just not great, but yeah, it's one of those things where Jason just tried something new, and and it didn't work. <laughs> a lot of people just didn't really like it. I liked I liked like half of it, and I didn't like the other half of it. Like I liked oh, yeah, no, like I like the perk system. Yeah. I like the modifier system. Mm-hmm. I like specialist weapons. I know a lot of people are like oh specialist weapons make things too easy. Blah 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 blah. And then they'll use Ring of Fire in Cold War. Um, right. You know, so it's like, like you know. I don't mind. I don't mind. And it's like, yeah. I I got to say this right now. Pete, the same people who complained about Black Ops 4 having specialist weapons and made the game too easy will sit in a corner with Ring of Fire and spam the ray gun on D-Machine A. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, I'm just you, know, saying. you want to talk about overpowered and you want to talk about, oh, well, this isn't bad. This takes away from the, the fun of zombies. Doesn't that do the same thing? Like you're just using the same things over and over again, and it's like, right? It's, it's that overpowered kind of thing that you were complaining about last year. Like, I, is it just because but, it's ether? And I mean, here, like, I don't know. I just, here, here's my thing, I guess, as well, right? And I know, I know, we're kind of going more into like the the zombie community side of things now, and I think Firebase Z is a good example. Like, I think Firebase Z really brings to light. A lot of the things that are going on and like the comparisons and things like that. I think personally, and okay, well, hear me out, right? When the main content creators enjoy the game, majority of the community enjoy the game. When the main content creators don't enjoy the game, the majority of the community don't enjoy it. Now, that's a it's a very gray area. Right, and I'm not blaming the people who, like, you know, like Lex and stuff. Like, they got blamed for, you know, the game failing because they didn't show support to it, and right. stuff, which is, which is absolute bollocks, right? Yeah. Like, if someone doesn't want to play the game, then they don't have to. They're their yeah. own person. They can choose whatever they want to do, right? right? Yeah. But I think the zombie community is one of the communities where nostalgia is so important, and they see these people they looked up to, like, like as as a, as, you know, like um, how would I put it? Like, well, someone they look up to, right? And then they see them not liking it, and then they're like, "Oh well, if he doesn't like it, then I guess I don't like it." Because it's it's herd mentality, man. It's yeah, and like I, I hate to be that guy, but it is. It it's it is. It there's so many yeah. people, you know, they'll see the first thing on their Twitter timeline, and then oh, everyone else is saying it, so I gotta say it too, and I agree with yeah. that because that's what everyone's thinking. And it's back. I think that's backwards. I absolutely think yeah. that's backwards. I just like make your own damn opinion. Exactly. That's what I'm yeah. always. Saying. And and then you just it, it's kind of like you know. I, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna say it. It's like Twitter stands. I'm gonna say it. I mean, <laughs> like it, it's it's the same. It's a it's the same amount of it's the same people that will be like, just they don't know anybody. They don't know who the person is, but they'll hate somebody for no reason, and they don't know the full story, or, oh, I'm just going to hate this map, I'm going to hate this game, because everyone else told me to hate this game because they don't like it. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Just saying. And I think it's just so much negativity in that area where there doesn't need to be. And people, you, here, here's all I'm going to say about it, and then I'm going to move on from it, because I don't. It, this, yeah. is a, this is a tricky topic, but like... If y'all spent the same amount of time hating people, it, it, oh, hang on, let me rephrase that. If y'all spent the same amount of time being positive and doing something and forming your own opinion and being productive and spreading some some kind of positivity, the same amount of time with that than you do hating people on Twitter, 
then the world will be and the community will be a less toxic place. A lot of communities will be a lot less toxic. And I'm not saying the zombies community is toxic. I'm just saying that section of people because it doesn't speak for everybody. But yeah, I'm just saying true. that if these I negative can... people spend as much time being negative as they would being positive, oh my god. You, yeah. would, you would see how people's lives would be so much fucking different and then they wouldn't have a stick up their ass and mm -hmm. they would actually be productive with themselves. And, mm. you know, just be... Well, what's, I, what's wrong with being I positive, man? Saying, Come on. Yeah, be positive because that's, that's the thing at the end of the day. Like, I think as well, like talking about toxicity, there's a lot. Um, we got another message from uh, Zazu. It's a good point. Most people in this community make me think some people are just born to be negative. Well, yeah, like mm -hmm. I completely get that. Like I think it's a very small portion because there's like not to like be like, oh, we're so great. But I think I think us guys, you know, like this sort of part of the community is like really, yeah. you know, they want the best thing for the game. They want Absolutely. they want the games to be good. And that's all they want. That's all they really care about. They want the game, the zombie games they play to be enjoyable. Right. They want to have a good time. They want to interact with people who also love the same game as them. You know, like that's why, that's why we started the podcast for goodness sake, because like, we want to interact with other people and like, like, you know, and we want, have opportunities we, we, to talk to other people in the community. Yeah. We want to talk about we all our love favorite game. game. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then you got that, like, like that five, 10% that are just like, like, like it's just exhausting. And it's sad that that five ten percent is is so vo it's people think it's a vocal majority. You know, yeah. people are gonna be like, right. "Oh, well, that's that's just that's just the zombies community. That's just they're just a bunch of crybabies and they're just a bunch of hypocrites and they're all negative." You know, and that's what's just such a unfortunate, not it's not a truth, but it's an unfortunate situation that people find themselves in, where it's like, "Oh, well, yeah." You, you associate with the zombies community and then you make call of Duty zombies content. Like, you know, what a, what a weird community to be a part of. And it's like, no, it's really not, you know, I don't know. It's just, mm. I, I might be talking too much and I'm, and I'm making it sound more complicated than it is. Cause at the end of the day, <laughs> it's literally just stay, just be positive. And if, yeah, again, if you spent the same amount of time being positive than you did being negative, you would, you would be better for it. I guarantee you. Yeah. If you did something productive with that time. And you know what? For the people who just choose to stay negative all the time and they start bombarding you with negative shit and, you know, they start telling you how to think because of herd mentality, fuck them. <laughs> well, there you go. Seriously. Like, that is, like yeah. what are, these people, you know, you really have to not care what people think. Because if you're doing, mm. if you're doing you and you're making the best fucking content, don't get me wrong, feedback is always appreciated. Yeah, there's, absolutely. A difference, there's a difference between feedback and people being like, well, you suck because of this. And, and you know, you didn't do this, so you're not a YouTuber. Yeah. You know, it's like, fuck what other yeah. people think, but it's awesome what other people think, too, because you want to see what people want to say. Um, mm. But the people who are just overly negative, you just go, eh, whatever, fuck you. I don't care. Weird topic. Didn't expect to talk about it that day, but you know what? I'm <laughs> well, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? With Firebase Z with all the positive stuff, I think that small majority as well, like you can see the negative. And I think it's a topic that's deserved being talking about. And I think it's a it's important to talk about it because like we can just ignore it, which is a good thing to do as well, but like we know it's there, you know? Mm. And especially with Twitter, it's so easy just to tweet something. And because because we, we um we have um Zazu in the chat again saying it's easier to tweet than like and hate. Like exactly, mm -hmm. like agree. so many things you say in a tweet that you wouldn't say in person. Yeah, like me, 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 like my mindset is like, like okay, I'm gonna say what I believe in, but if I don't have to annoy anyone or anyone's feelings, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna, you know, keep my mouth shut, unless it's something I'm really passionate about. Like I wouldn't just, I wouldn't just be like, oh, if you like Firebase, you're an idiot. Like I'd be like, okay, I know everyone else is enjoying Firebase, but I think these are the reasons why I don't like it. It's, yeah, I don't know. It bring, you you want to bring something constructive to it, you know? What about you, yeah, Magna? Yeah, exactly. This is kind of a weird topic that we kind of uh. jumped on, and I didn't expect <laughs> to jump on this topic, but what do you think about it? Just like, yeah, just, uh, I don't know, like, yeah, people, I don't know, it just seems like, I mean, like, I love zombies, and I like, really get into it, but at the same time, I don't get, like, super into, like, meaning, like, I don't, 
I don't, I don't take it too seriously as you know like i mean yeah. i just like having fun like like you're saying mm-hmm. like i mean i think just some people like they come into something loving it and then somehow they get turned into some kind of monster you know it's like they in the, they, in the dark e-fair <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Not long. laughs> go in and they come out uh, yeah just deformed and just <laughs> just just not the good <laughs> right it's, it's like i mean just just worry about your it's what i always say just worry about yourself like if, if you're a content creator don't worry about anybody else's success but yours agreed i like, don't think yeah, exactly. you, you shouldn't be the first in the world who cares if you're if your content's great it's gonna do great yeah yeah that was my thing as well. Right. I think for think for us that we went in the map just wanting to enjoy it. Like we're like, right. oh, this is fun. And again, exactly. I can understand the mentality of being first in the world, but for me, it's important that my content's good. Right. Like, right. I, I want yeah. to make sure because I I don't know. I, I mean, we talk about video stuff for a bit, but like you know, you know, I'm going mm-hmm. into a video, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think I think we all have a process, but for me, going in, I get gameplay. Or oh, I need, I get the gameplay I need. Mm-hmm. I'll go into Audacity, talk, cut, you know, edit, you know, right. compress it, you know, make it sound all good. And sometimes I would record like ten minutes worth of audio. I listen back to it. And I'm like, I hate it. I hate it. Right. I have to redo it yeah. again. Mm-hmm. Like, because I'm listening to my point. I'm listening to my point, right? And I hear myself talking in a way I don't let me talk. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I'll say something. I'm like, I don't like that. I, yeah, I relate something. to that. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, like I. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm just trying to say is, yeah, like work on your content and make that your main priority, mm-hmm. and you'll succeed. Like something I've learned by doing YouTube is patience, patience, and mm-hmm. enjoy what you're doing. Because the moment you don't enjoy what you're doing, people are going to tell, and you're going to start failing. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah, you. Right. I don't want to like. It's like you lost in a way. Like you, you lost a something that you had. And yeah, people will take note of that. And if you're just not having fun with it, yeah, why are you doing it? You know? Yeah, exactly. And that's this whole thing with YouTube. I think a lot of people they they whip out their phones and and they whip out you know their their recording software or whatever. They make like a couple of videos and a couple of weeks they don't have like million subscribers. They have like two, and they're like, why am I not famous? Yeah. I, what, yeah. what happened? Like, what, isn't this content supposed to be good? You know, like you know, it's patience. It's patience yeah. and it's making a, a good content and it's making content right. that you are passionate about and people will start to come to your content for you. And right. that's what's cool. And you'll start – it might take you a little while maybe. Yeah. But if it's something you really want to do and you're passionate about it, you'll find the time to do it. You know? Because – yeah. Here's what I see with creators. I think we can all see this. But you know for – like growing on YouTube is kind of like a snowball, right? It's gonna take, yeah. you know, you have to, you have to, you know, you're pushing up the hill, up the hill, up the hill, you know, really, really hard. You eventually get to like, let's say, like we eventually get to like, like five k, right? Like that's a milestone that I think is great for like someone to reach, right? Yeah. You get the five k. Once you get around that mark, I think you're like kind of you push the snowball down, and then all the downfall momentum, like easy, you know, it's 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 doing the work for you at that point because you have such a following. Your videos point. are doing well from this side. You know, it, all the people interacting help push the video out. And yeah, it's all about patience and getting to that milestone. And again, I think as well, like I think with YouTube, there's a combination of treating it kind of like a business. Like you want to be professional and you want your content to be the best it can be. But at the end of the day, it has to be a hobby. And I think part of YouTube as well is yeah. accepting that it might not work out, you know? Right. That's something I went in thinking like, okay, I'm going to give it my best shot. If I blew up and start making like, you know, PewDiePie money, that's amazing, right? <laughs> Good for me, right? But if not, that's fine as well. I'm accept- I'm going to accept right. that and I'm still going to make video no matter what. Like it's what I like. It's a hobby I don't think I'll stop doing now because it's a hobby for me. Yeah. But I like being good. Exactly. What do you think about it, Magna? So a lot of people don't have that mentality either, you know? Yeah. Like they... I don't think they have the mentality to like, yeah, like even if like if they love playing zombies like me, because I mean, I got I got into BO3. I loved it. Then at some point down the line about BO4 near the end of BO4, I was like starting to like, oh, I want to stream because like I love watching my streamers, you know, play. And, and I've always just like been the type that like, I mean, I've never even done content. I've just streamed, but I just love like 
playing zombies and just having fun, like just being mm -hmm. in chat, just acting yeah. crazy, just talking to everyone, you know. Um, but you got to like understand, like you said too, Jason, like it's a process. Like, I mean, I was on Mixer for like 10 months. I gained up to like 353 followers. But in the beginning, I had nobody. I had like for months, I had nobody in chat, like just yeah. me playing the game, just talking to myself, you know, like and that's, that's the grind. Yeah, the exactly. fact that you grinded, it paid off because people right. started noticing and they started exactly. like, you know, following that's, that's right. when I think you have someone, you know, when someone follows that shows yep. that like, you know, you've made such a good impression that they're willing to press that button. Mm -hmm. and, right, mm -hmm. exactly. And it's As, crazy. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I, it's, it, I always get a little bit of sense of, ah, there's a word I'm looking for. I can't think about it right now. Like, I, I don't remember what the word is, but it's one of those feelings where you go, oh, damn, you know, mm -hmm. like that's cool. Like, I really appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like every, yeah. every person who subscribed, every person who's followed, I might not know everybody, but I really yeah. appreciate no. you. And yeah, that's yeah. awesome that you chose to watch my videos. And I, and I appreciate that you guys think it's good, you know? And it's like vice versa to everybody, all my friends in the community too. I see everyone's numbers go up and I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Exactly. I, I know. Right. I, yeah. I, I appreciate that people are hitting their buttons too, because yeah. I love seeing people my friends don't... grow, and I love seeing people grow, and it's yeah. awesome to see that this people working from the ground up and working on themselves and their own individual liberty to do that. That's a, that's yeah. one of the most amazing things that you can do is to grind and and make something of yourself from the gr ground up and starting from nothing. And yeah. that's that's so admirable, and I really I really think the grind is something that a lot of people not underestimate but they don't take into consideration when they're looking yeah. at it on a surface level when people are like casual fans because they'll be like oh that's just you know they just make videos and they make money oh that's fun haha -ha. you know but there's a lot of process behind it and right. yeah you know at the end of the day how bad do you want it yeah, exactly i think that's it as well that's a good point like if you want to like okay right if i sat you down and you know we talked we had a, like, a, like jason right let's say you wanted to be a big youtuber right and i was like how bad do you want and you're sitting you're bad oh, okay are you willing to put in you know possible eight hours a day Absolutely. making videos the highest standard consistently mm -hmm. you know making promises doing things like like branching out you like like you know like like merch you know do other things like discord you know manage other social media <laughs> Yeah. Merch, <laughs> merch. Um, just, just had to plug the merch one more time. You know, exclamation mark. Merch. One more time. Yeah, one more time. One more time. Um, but like, it's really if you want it that bad, it's definitely possible. Yeah, one hundred percent, it's possible. Like you, you could do it, but it's more. You have to kind of keep that, like that, like that. Um, uh, how do I put it? you have to keep that passion going right and success will fuel the fire but it's when it's when there's some periods of like let's say like when there's no new content to make videos on is that period where i think people struggle and don't know what to do and they're like oh what am i supposed to post i can't i, I don't want to post this and it's like at that point where it's like you have to dig deep and keep going and then good things will come to you because people I think people are afraid to try new shit. Yeah. And a lot of people, yeah, because they're like, oh, well, the game's not, you know, there's not a lot for the game. And, you know, oh, that just means the content's going to die. Try new shit. Try a new yeah. game. Maybe try a new challenge. Just try stuff, you know, yeah. and, and see what happens. Because, again, at the end of the day, people are going to watch your content for you. And yeah. I think if you try something, something good can come of it. And like, mm. oh, I had I had something else I wanted to say. Um, well, yeah, tagging on that fault, I oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that's the other thing. But people people don't want to try new shit because they get. I think they get. I think people get comfortable. I think people get yeah, too yeah, comfortable in the fact yeah. that I'm here. I'm gonna make content. You good? Oh, I'm gonna make content oh, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is where I'm gonna be. And, you know, this is my, this is like like the little safe zone, the little safe space for content, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. they, they're like, this is this is me and, you know, 
blah, blah, blah. and they don't open out of their cocoon, you know? Right. Trying yep. new things is so underestimated because yeah, think about it this you way. No, dream, you know what you're doing. dream created Minecraft Manhunt. Look at how much that exploded in the YouTube gaming scene and just the gaming scene in general. So yeah. many people watch Dream now because he made that, and he made a yeah. bunch of other videos that are just unique. And he, you know, you try new things. You take what's yeah, given. I and you mm-hmm. try something new with it, and you bring your own little twist to it, I think people right. are yeah. too stagnant. They're afraid mm-hmm. to do that because they're afraid of failure. Yeah, they're exactly. They're afraid of failure, and they're afraid of, of, of either, critic- either criticism or failure. I think failure is the big thing that people are afraid of. I got a quote. I have a quote. I, I have to quote Gary Vee here because Gary Vee is such an influential guy to me because I think he's such a cool guy. Fall in love with failure. Okay, you learn from your failures so you can come back 10 times as stronger. Fall in love with failure so you learn and you become a better person. And a lot of people Mm. don't take that into consideration. They they don't take that into consideration or they do take it into consideration and they're just afraid to to fail. And they're afraid to do things because it's unknown to them. Yeah, I think I think as well, kind of piggybacking on that a wee bit. And let me know what you think of this. But like the successful people are the ones that have failed the most agreed absolutely 100 percent. it's the will it's the will of keeping going and getting past them failures that get you there you know yeah like well think about it how many athletes do you think take part in competitions and then like they 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 lose it they bomb it you know they do really bad and then uh, one day they get to the olympics and they win they win it I totally agree. My, you know, my favorite NFL player of all time, Aaron Rodgers. My, you know, my Green Bay Packers. You know, we've dealt with a lot of hardships in the past. We get back up. We're still the best franchise in the NFL. Just saying. Um, and it's like, you know, the the amount of hardships that people like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers go through, like sports athletes and things like that. These people get. They literally. These people put their bodies on the line for this shit. And then to mm-hmm. have it all come crashing down in the NFC Championship game for the second year in a row. I'm still sad about that, by the way. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like you got to get yourself back up and start grinding again, man. Start grinding again. Get back to work yeah. because you can do it again. And you and you right. know you have the potential for you. Um, what about you, Magna? What do you think about all this? Um, I'm trying to think. What was the uh, – I, I was trying to think of what I was going to make a point of too. Um. As far as just content creating, uh, dang it, Jason, that was... <laughs> I know, I, I know, I, 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 I tend well. to talk a lot, and then people have their no, points, no, no, and then they, they forget. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just because I, I, I love talking about shit like this, man. It just it gets me going. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think two people that like, I think that maybe even what they play or what they do for their con- like content creating. It, it's almost like you, you got to develop yourself first. Like it, it, you got to worry more about yourself than the like what you're doing in the content. Kind of like what Turbo was saying. Because I agree a lot with what he said. Like you got to really like focus on like because it's it's all about like yeah they're coming to watch they're coming to like watch you play zombies. Let's say they love zombies, but like ultimately they're gonna fall in love with you, the personality. Yeah, that's what happened with me with Turbo. Like, I love that he plays zombies. I love watching his zombie stuff, but I've yeah. fallen in love now with just his personality. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love his videos he's making right now. Cool guy. Yes, me too. And that's the point. Yeah. Like, you got to work on figuring out what your character, mm. I mean, to a certain point, what your character is. You know, I mean, you're real, still going to sh- portray your true self, but you just got to figure out what your niche and your character and you. Yeah. Because that's Agreed. what you're coming for. Agreed. Mm. My chat is saying the greatest teacher failure is. <laughs> indeed oh yeah jason yeah star wars man <laughs> jason loves himself from star wars not the I last three but he likes the rest maybe of not the last three maybe not maybe not force awakens last jedi and rise of Skywalker. Um, but um 
Well, there's no character development. I haven't, I haven't even watched the movies, and you know, I know there's no character this, development. This podcast um, could go on for another three hours, and I can tell you everything <laughs> wrong about the three movies that Disney has made in the in the Skywalker saga that they're calling it, even though the last three movies have nothing to do with the... To, uh, okay, so anyways, guys, um, that is... Uh, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this Not episode there. of the podcast before I go on an angry rant about uh, Star Wars. Um, Star Wars. Let us know what you guys thought in the comments about this video. We talked about Firebase Z. We talked about the Easter egg for Firebase Z. And then at the end, we kind of got into a little bit of content creation. We talked about you know staying, staying positive, and we talked about some real <laughs> shit. I think, and Go you know, real. I don't mind. I don't mind doing that. And you know, at the end of the day, guys, make something of yourself. Work hard, and you yeah. know, be patient. Be patient because yeah, be if patient. You, 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 if you really want to. I, you know, I just have so much I want to say in my head <laughs> that I just go. Um, but if you really want to, if you really want to do something in your life, you know, you'll definitely, you'll definitely work. You'll get it there. And you'll find the time to do it. Yeah. And you'll get there. Um, yeah. I believe in you. Hey, you behind that screen. Work hard. I believe in you. Yeah, yeah you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of the Division Z podcast. Thank you so much to Magna Collider for coming on the show Yo, and having some God, fun with God. us. God. Any God. closing thoughts for both of the Kyles here before we end things off? I mean, Kyle, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just thanks for having me on, guys. Um, uh, Like I said, if it wasn't for Turbo, I never would have found y'all guys, so because of Zombros, because of finding Turbo through Zombros and his podcast, and then finding from his podcast to your podcast. Okay. It's been great. Appreciate that, man. How about you, Cosmic? And for me, uh, all I have to say is Firebase Z, hmm. it gets a big, a big thumbs up. From me. Yeah. It gets a thumbs up out of oh, 10, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. It's awesome. Um, Anyways, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the podcast. If you guys did enjoy and you haven't already, hit us up all with a follow on our social medias. Everyone will be linked down below in the description. And also, if you haven't checked it out already, you can go ahead and check out the link for the official Division Z podcast <laughs> merchandise <laughs> link down <laughs> below. Um, for those of you who didn't see it, I'm just going to stand up real quick and show you guys. I love this design. <laughs> I love this design. Here it is. That's there awesome. It is. <laughs> You got the zombie talk. Oh my gosh, my thing is squeaky. You got the uh, you got the zombie talking to the microphone, which is always a blast. And uh, huge shout out to Aragorn Jones again for making that design. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And we will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.